Hey folks, I'm Howard Lux. And I'm Jeff Berg. We are the two boneheads. Um, today we're going to talk to you about a controversial topic in shoulder surgery, and that is the impingement syndrome. Jeff, what was the initial description of impingement syndrome? Yeah, so, well, traditionally, it was, it was always that the, uh, well, let's define the anatomy first. So basically the problem is in the space right above the rotator cuff. And, and what you have is you have, if you think about the floor being the, the ball of your shoulder and the rotator cuff on top of that, and then the roof being, here we go again with the phone, and then the roof being uh, a bone on the top called the acromion, and then sandwiched between the two sits a little sac called a bursa. And when we were talking about impingement syndrome, it traditionally uh, was thought of that the roof, the acromion, developed a big spur and would press on the rotator cuff and that bursa, causing pain. Right. So it was initially described, uh, I think back in the 70s, uh, by Charlie Neer. Um, and it was, was quickly adopted by all orthopedic surgeons. Everyone thought that the cause of shoulder pain in most people, and certainly the cause of rotator cuff tears, was this bone spur. Um, and we started to whack the bone spur out of everyone, initially open, then arthroscopic, and there are still surgeons that are doing it today. But the, the research is changing, right? We don't really believe much in impingement syndrome uh, as it was talked about classically, do we? Yeah, well, so as you said, we used to take that spur off. It was called an acromioplasty. And I can remember when I was training, I mean, we, anybody came with shoulder pain, the first thing you did was do an acromioplasty. Right. And I would say that the amount of acromioplasties that I now do is rather small. And, um, and I, I think really the way I see it is more uh, that instead of the roof coming down and pressing on the structures, I really think most of it is that the floor is coming up and narrowing that space. So how does that happen? So the rotator cuff gets weakened. Uh, the rotator cuff becomes torn. Uh, maybe you just get a traumatic event where your shoulder, your humerus is pushed up uh, traumatically and that bursa gets irritated and thickened. And all of that causes pain and weakness and stiffness and dysfunction in the shoulder and the floor comes up. Right. Pause. So, you know, it's always been a pet peeve of mine that uh, uh, the same sports medicine surgeon could see a painful Achilles tendon in the office and tell them that the Achilles tendon was a source of their pain, then a patella tendon and tell them that a patella tendon was a source of the pain, and same with tennis elbow, yet when they saw a shoulder pain patient, oh no, it's not your tendon, it's this bone spur, and we're going to cut it out. So the world has changed. We've done a lot of papers, a lot of research, um, rotator cuff repairs with or without removing that bone spur which we call an acromioplasty, and it turns out removing the acromion really isn't um, uh, a benefit. Um, and as Jeff just pointed out, there are some times on rare occasions where there's a bone spur that's really sticking down into the rotator cuff, it might be a problem, or we need to remove a little of bone to open up the space so we can do a rotator cuff repair. But I don't think I've ever taken someone to an operating room in years uh, for just an acromioplasty. Yeah, for me, it's pretty rare. I mean, so, like you said, sometimes I do see a spur down there and, and maybe it's like just pressing on that rotator cuff. I can envision as that person lifts their arm, um, it's gonna poke in there. And even though I know that if we strengthen up that rotator cuff or if it's torn, fix that rotator cuff, that space may widen. Uh, that it, pain may inhibit their ability to do rehab or something. And so I, I would say occasionally I do a chromioplasty, but nothing like when I first started in practice, uh, you know, 19, 20 years ago, uh, chromioplasties were, were exceedingly common and, and they're just not so much today. Right. So I guess, you know, it comes down to, you know, patients asking, you know, where's the pain coming from? I mean, for me, I guess it's coming from sometimes the bursitis uh, and rotator cuff, right? Rotator cuff tendinosis or degenerative, degenerative rotator cuff disease. Do you yeah, agree? I would agree. And I, I think, you know, um, 
the, the tendinosis obviously is hard to treat. I mean, how do you treat that? It's just aging and degeneration of the tendon. And right. when you, uh, human beings do that. If you look at, uh, if you look at MRIs or, or cadavers as patients age, the incidence of rotator cuff tears will naturally increase with time. So we know that happens, but we don't really know how to stop that right now. The bursitis we can treat. What I, what I usually tell my patients is that uh, there, there really is the three things that we really need to do when you have uh, the so-called impingement syndrome is you got to uh, stop the painful activities. That's clear. You know, rest sometimes can heal some of this stuff. We got to figure out a way to get your shoulder dysfunction corrected. So whatever that is, sometimes there's tightness in the back of the shoulder, weakness of the rotator cuff, whatever we can correct. We usually end up doing that through home exercises or therapy or some manner like that. And then we got to try to figure out to, to reduce the pain generator. Uh, and that may be a combination of tendinosis and it may be a combination of bursitis. And if we could tackle those three things, any good, good shot, pretty good shot of getting rid of this uh, without any need for surgery. I agree. So there you have it. Uh, the impingement theory or the bone spur theory as the cause of rotator cuff tears is slowly dying away. And it should have died away a long time ago, but it's still around. Um, yeah, well, ho hopefully this discussion, because I know, Howard, for you, definitely for me, when patients come to my office, they're always asking about that bone spur they heard from some other a physician and sometimes maybe they're frustrated because I'm just blowing that off. Uh, it's exactly. not that cool. Oh, but I don't know that it's that important. Right. It's one of those tough, tough, uh, and those patients read a lot online and a lot of doctors and there's still a lot of literature out there about the bone spur. So it's going to take a long time for this to go away. Uh, but I think the key take home message is uh, the bone spur is not the cause of your problem. Um, uh, impingement th theory as the cause of rotator cuff tears has largely been disproven. So folks, take care. Have a good day. Have a great day.